In this video, I am going to explain anatomy of scapula. I am going to explain landmark of scapula in this video. So let me explain each landmark. This part is medial border because this side is medial of human body, right? This is medial part and this is lateral part. Medial border and lateral border. Simple, right? Medial and lateral. And there are angles in scapula. This is superior angle. This is inferior angle. Superior and inferior. If you go up this way, this is lateral border, right? And you see there is contour deep to this structure. You see this? This is glenoid fossa. Fossa means a concave surface in bone. It's like this, right? This part is like this. Glenoid fossa. By the way, this is humerus, arm body, right? Humerus, and this part is head of humerus. Head of humerus fits into glenoid fossa. Imagine this is glenoid fossa. This is head of humerus. It's like this. Now this surface makes what? Shoulder joint, right? This joint is classified as ball and socket joint. This is very movable joint. That is why you can move your shoulder in different directions and range of motion is very, very wide. Why? Because of this bony structure. Head of humerus and glenoid fossa. Let's move on to the next part. This is spine of scapula. Spine of scapula. And this part, the lateral part of spine of scapula, this part is acromion. Okay, acromion, very flat surface. Acromion. And what is this surface on back side of scapula? This is infraspinous fossa. Yay, fossa again. What is fossa? It's concave surface of bone, right? Infraspinous fossa. And there is another concave surface. What is this? This is supraspinous fossa. This is obviously concave surface. This is infraspinous fossa. This is supraspinous fossa. Here is how I remember landmark. What is this one? This is spine of scapula, right? Infraspinous fossa is below spine of scapula. Infra means below, right? Infraspinous fossa. What is this part? This is supraspinal fossa. Supra means up. Infraspinal fossa. Supraspinal fossa. It makes sense, right? Now let's go to anterior part. There is fossa in front part of scapula. See, this is kind of a concave surface. See that? This contour. Scapula is not complete horizon. It's like this, right? It's concave surface. This surface is subscapular fossa. Subscapular fossa. Why is this so curvy? Why isn't it so flat? Because there is rib cage in front of scapula. Imagine this is scapula and there is rib cage in front of scapula. Because of this concave and convex surface, scapula can glide on rib cage. Can you imagine that? This is very, very important thing. That is why uh, movement of scapula is very, very important. And also rib cage is important for scapular movement. Why? Because there is the gliding surface between rib cage and scapula. Subscapular fossa. And what is 
this one, this is coracoid process. Coracoid process. This is very unique bony prominent, right? It's like a random bump of bone. This is also important place because there are many ligaments attaching on coracoid process. Plus, there are three muscles attaching on coracoid process. This is tiny, tiny landmark. However, many ligaments and muscles attaching on coracoid process. You know, scapula is very unique bone. It has unique shape and there is a lot of things to remember. But remembering this terminology is very, very important to understand muscle anatomy nerve anatomy and mechanics of uh, scapular movement and shoulder movement. I know memorization is very hard at the beginning, but you can uh, build up uh, anatomy knowledge, then it will work and it will help you after years and years. This is fundamental for understanding anatomy. If you liked today's video, please hit the like button comment and subscribe. See you next video.